So today we're going to look at an application called bat, which is basically cat plus syntax highlighting. That's about as simple as it gets. So doing basic sort of cat operations with this works exactly the same way inside of bat. So we can do things like bat dot zshemp, and that will then print out the file, but it does it instead with some highlighting and a bunch of other things added to it as well. Now, you can go and select which of these you want to use, and I'll show you how to do that in just a bit. And also by default, it's gonna print it inside of a pager, and this as well, you can disable. Now by default, it uses less as its pager, but if you wanna use a different pager or just none at all, that's very simple to do. So you can also do things like bat.zshemp, and let's also do bat, uh, bash underscore profile and that will then print the two files together so if we scroll to the bottom of this wherever the bottom is it's a uh, quite a long file I should have picked a different file instead of this one and there we go now we're at the bash profile now one other neat thing this does that cat doesn't do is it actually shows these little symbols along the side here so let's just go and look at one file so my zsh -emph, and let's scroll down a bit see if we can find something so here we go as you can see, there is a dash here and there is a tilde here. Now, if I was to add a line, there would be a plus. And what this basically is, is very similar to what you see in something like Git Gutter. Basically, it's showing how the file was modified inside of your Git repo. So a tilde is a modified line, a minus is a removed line, and a plus is an added line. Now, I don't believe these symbols can be modified, but their colors will be defined by your color scheme. One other neat thing you can do is you can do some visual line modifications. So we have the dash capital H and dash lowercase r. So I'm going to do the capital H first. So if we do bat and let's say dash H and let's say one. So what this is basically going to do is highlight the first line. And you don't just have to highlight a single line. You can also do ranges as well. So let's do instead uh, 20 colon 30. So this will highlight from lines 20 to lines 30. And as you can see, those lines there are highlighted. So we can also do something else. If we just don't include one of these numbers, let's not include the second number. Basically what that's going to do is highlight from line 20 to the end of the file. So run that. And if we scroll down, as we can see, every single other line is going to be highlighted. So if we were to do that the other way around though, so if we do colon and then the number, Basically, this is going to highlight from the start to that number. And as you can see, from line 1 to line 20. Now, the dash lowercase r is for showing a line range. So, this uses the exact same syntax we saw before. So, you can do, say, bat dash r and then show from lines 10 to lines 30. And let's do it on my zsh -emp. And as we can see, it shows those lines. Now, one thing to note about the pager is by default, it doesn't always use the pager. It only uses the pager when the lines go past the length of the window. And obviously those can be combined together. So you can do something like say, show from lines 10 to lines 30, and then highlight from line 15 to the end. And as we can see, it starts from line 15. So it's not relative to what you're actually printing. It's relative to the length of the document. So there are two arguments we can use to mess with the paging. So the first one is paging, and the second one is pager. So paging is when to use the pager. So if we do something like, say, bat, dash, dash, paging, uh, let's say, never. So never means it's never going to use the pager. So as we can see, it just prints out the document. The other options we can use are auto and always. Always, obviously, will always use the pager, and auto is the default setting. And pager, obviously, is what pager to actually use. Now, the other way we can disable the pager is by actually setting the dash dash pager argument to be nothing. So in this case, it's not going to have any page to run. So if we do dot zsh -emp, as we can see, it does the same thing we saw before. So and if you always want to use the same page, you can set the bat underscore pager environment variable all in caps, and that will then let you set that value. Now, the other thing we can do is mess around with the style. So the style is basically all of these extra things we see along the side. So if we do bat dash dash style and set it to plain, that basically means get rid of all of the extra stuff. So let's print out the zsh emp. And as we can see, now we just have the text and also the syntax highlighting. So there's also an alias for that, and that is doing dash p instead. So dash p dot zsh -emp, and that means the exact same thing. If you just want to see the numbers, that can be done with the dash dash style equals numbers. 
And as we can see, we just have the numbers in this case. And there's also an alias for that, which is just bat dash n. So print that out. And it's the exact same thing that we just saw before. Now with the plain variable, there's also an extra way you can disable the pager, but I've seen this in other applications and I'm still not a fan of doing it like this. So if you do dash pp, that will be plain plus no pager. I don't know why applications keep including this. It's a really weird thing to do and isn't documented very well, but that is also an option as well. You can also use auto, full, changes, header, grid, and snip. And sadly, there's no way to do multiple at the same time. So you can't do something like, say, bat dash dash style equals numbers and dash dash style equals header or include them in a list. Neither of those actually work. So whatever the last style is, is the style you're going to be using. So in this case, it's going to be the header. If there is actually a way to do it, it is missing from the documentation. So the other thing we can do with the style is we can do bat dash capital A, this is going to go and disable the syntax highlighting, but what it's going to do is let us actually see unprintable characters. So as we can see, we have spaces and we have our line endings and things like that. And there's a bunch of other characters that don't normally get printed, but if you need to see them, that can be done with this. Now your style can also be set with your environment variable bat underscore style as well. Now, one other thing is like with paging, there's also a dash dash decorations option. So dash dash decorations, and this basically sets when to actually use the decorations. So there's auto, never, and always, and they work in the exact same way as we saw before. Now, besides using those environment variables, you can also go and set things in a config file as well. However, this is kind of poorly documented. The structure is very simple though, and there's also a command to automatically go and generate a config file, but this command isn't actually in the man page. So it is generate-config-file, and as we're going to see, it's going to ask me to overwrite my file because I already generated it before. I'm going to say yes, and it will save it into slash home slash brody dot config slash bat slash config. So let's go over to that one. So my config folder, go down to bat. And as we can see, there's a config in here. The way this works is really weird, and I don't know why they decide to do it like this. Basically, anything you want to set in the config file is just setting the option you want to use. So if you want to set the theme, you do it like this. If you want to say, always use italic text, basically do it like that. I don't know why they're doing the config like this, but I guess it works. Now, generally bat is very good about working out what syntax highlighting to actually use. But if you want to go and specify which language the file you're looking at actually should be using, you can go and see a list of the supported languages with the bat dash capital L argument. And it's quite a long list. I'll just pipe it into less. Yeah, it's quite a long list. So most things are probably going to be supported. And if you want to say specify a language, that is done with bat lowercase l and then whatever one you want to use. And you don't just have to use the ones on the right hand side. You can use the name on the left hand side if that's what you prefer. And if you want to go and load in a custom language file, they've actually done a really smart thing here. So instead of making their own format for the language files, basically they're saying, go and use the sublime text language files and they just work in bat. So this basically lets them have a bunch of languages supported in this application without having to do anywhere near as much work. So if you want to go and install a new syntax file, basically you go into your bat config folder, uh, into bat, you make a folder in here, it will be called syntaxes, and then basically you just go and drop the file in here. And then themes work in a very similar way. So if we want to go and see the themes we have installed, we can do bat dash dash list dash themes, and these are just the default themes. I haven't actually installed any extras. So let's go and find an interesting looking one. Let's go with sublime snazzy. So let's just take this name right here, and what we're going to do is run a bat dash dash theme equals and then sublime snazzy. Now, obviously, because there's a space in here, we want to go and quote it and then pass in the file. And as we can see, now we're using that theme. And you can also go and use the bat underscore theme environment variable to go and set that one permanently. Like with the decorations, there's also a bat dash dash color, which lets you define when to actually use the color. And once again, you can do auto, never, and always. And if you want to go and install a new theme, that'll be in a very similar location to what we saw before. So back over to our bat config folder. And in here, what you would do is make a folder called themes, themes with an S on the end. 
and basically just dump the theme in there. And once again, it also uses a Sublime file, so it uses the same themes that Sublime Text uses. I didn't mention this earlier, but when you go and install a new theme or a new language, you should also go and run bat cache dash dash build. And basically what this is going to do is go and reload the cache. And this just makes sure that all of that stuff actually gets loaded into bat. Now in before all of the why bother using this comments, one of the reasons why you might want to use this is to have good previews inside your terminal file manager. Yeah, you can just have boring white text, but what you could also do is just have your text looking kind of nice. Now, I'm not actually using bat for my previews right now, but I might find a, uh, a code dark theme and then use it for this because I like code dark. It's the best looking theme, and I think that having everything being code dark would be nice and consistent. So that's really the main reason why you might want to use this. And Bat is a pretty good tool to use because it has the Sublime Text support. So if the language isn't supported out of the box, there's probably going to be a language file for it. And Bat is a very popular application, so on most distros you can probably find it in the standard repos. So I think that's pretty much everything I wanted to say about this. It's a very simple application. And yeah, there's other options I could have explored, but most of them are fairly boring. So I think that's pretty much everything for me. But before I go, I would like to thank my supporters. So a special thank you to Chris, Donald, Yo Joachim, Corbinian, Andre, Craig, Nathan, Monstar, Chico Bento, Joseph, Pidity, Road, Tony, Brennan, John, Marek, Mikel, Nate Dog, Nephite, Poe, Tease, and Zilva. If you want to go and support my work, the links down below to my Patreon, subscribe, star, leave pay, all of that sort of stuff. I've got my podcast, Tech Over Tea, available pretty much anywhere. And then this channel is available on Odyssey, Library, and BitChute if you want to watch on a platform that isn't YouTube. So I think that's pretty much everything for me, and I'm out. <laughs>